the book and in the movie version a couple of years later, Griffin, a white man, tells the story of how he darkened his skin with dye, medicine, and intense UV rays in order to experience what it was like for African Americans in the pre-civil rights South of the 1950s. Boy, a big idea. I want to find out what it's like to be a Negro in the South. You can. Over the course of six weeks, Griffin recounts how he was harassed, followed, and threatened by racist whites. You better find yourself another place to set. And in the end, he says that his assumption blacks were treated like second-class citizens turned out to be wrong. It was closer to 10th class. You know what we do to troublemakers here? Yeah? Oh? Kill a nigga and toss him one of these swamps. Nobody ever know anything about it. The book became a bestseller and a sensation. And it had a profound impact on me and countless other high schoolers. But when I revisited the book as an adult, something stood out that I hadn't thought about as a kid. Toward the very beginning of the book, Griffin asks, how else, except by becoming a Negro, could a white man hope to learn the truth? Ultimately concluding that the best way to find out if we had second-class citizens and what their plight was would be to become one of them. A white Southerner has to know what it's like to be a Negro. Really know. And you know what it's like, huh? After ten weeks or three months or whatever it is, you know. No, I don't know. And I can never know. Rereading this, I realized the entire premise was off. Griffin was attempting to understand racism by momentarily occupying blackness. He became a person of color. And while there's no question there's real value in whites trying to understand and ultimately empathize with the experience of African Americans, it struck me that we rarely, if ever, turn this line of thinking around. In other words, instead of asking what it's like to be black, what if we just asked what it's like to be white? I don't really know how, what it means really to be white or what it's supposed to mean. I guess I never really thought about it, but it was always kind of a negative thing. When I ask students what it means to be white, what I hear from them is a lot of confusion. The question, what does it mean to be white, um, it's, I, I, it baffles my mind. I don't know what it means. Whiteness isn't something we think much about, and in some ways, that makes perfect sense. In terms of white culture, it's very general and very big. Like, I think like, hmm, sitting down and having dinner with my family, but all cultures do that. Because when you're part of a dominant group, you're not forced to spend a lot of time thinking about how you fit in or about how your privileges as a member of the dominant group might affect others who don't belong to it. In order to express ourselves, we don't have to fit into black culture, Hispanic culture, Asian American culture. We can just kind of do what we want. Um, and I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. But he altered his appearance by shaving his head and then claiming on his medical school application that he was a black man. As part of the deception, he also used his middle name, Jojo. Why? There was statistical evidence that an African-American student with migraines and test scores was very likely to get admission to medical school, whereas an Indian-American applicant was unlikely to get in. He says his plan worked. He was accepted to the St. Louis University School of Medicine in 1990. St. Louis University says his race and ethnicity did not factor into his acceptance. So. Let's break it down. First of all, he has that on his website. That's not actually true. There's not, it's not like he applied to the school that he eventually went to, St. Louis University School of Medicine, and got rejected as an Indian guy. He didn't apply and get rejected as an Indian guy. He only applied as a black guy and got accepted. Right. So there was no such thing where they said, hey, Vijay, you're re uh, rejected. It's, that part is made up, okay? And then he says that, uh, as a black guy, he was, quote, a strong contender at prestigious medical universities like Harvard, Penn, Columbia, etc. These are all his assumptions. Yeah, well, what do you mean strong contender? Did you get in or did you not get in? If you didn't get in, you're not a strong contender. If you got in, you would have gone. So that's another part of the story that is enormously dubious. So he got into one of the schools, which is the school that he went to, right? Yeah. Yeah, so you changing your race or your ethnicity had nothing to do with you getting in. Anyway... He, and by the way, and like Anna said, the school says, no, we didn't take his race into account. So you have no idea why you got it. And you're pretending that it was because you were black. And This is Vijay Chokal, the guy that faked his ethnicity to get into uh, a medical school. The thing is, um, I, I didn't think that the clips 
said this, aside from him not getting in because of his race, this dude, when he got in, he dropped out. Like, seriously, I think it was just trolling the school system because of just, you know, him talking, just, just trying to prove a point that was not even proved in that regard. The, the irony of this is he got harassed because he was black and just a lot of things that had happened to him because of that. Now, granted, I mean, technically... He may not be black American, but in, you know, where he's from, he's a Tamil Indian. Some people would regard that as black. That's another conversation. But what he did was just pretty much, you know, a, a, a pretty much blackface, if anything. Even though he didn't dye his skin or anything like that, he pretty much trolled um, the school system. For, for people that basically have had hard times in getting into school because of racial prejudice. And that was wrong, you know. Um, it reminds me of a movie that I saw when I was a kid. You guys probably might know this movie, Soul Man. Where C. Thomas Hall plays basically a white dude that pretty much puts on blackface. And got into Harvard Law and got a lot of other things that he thought he wouldn't get um, as far as like just what happened to that. Uh, I mean, <clears throat> what happened to him, how he got basically beaten up at one point in the movie by some drunken bigots. I think he got if you guys can remember, I haven't I haven't seen this movie in years. I think he got like harassed by cops and stuff, too. But the thing is, like, it's weird. When I saw this movie, you know, I, I as a kid, thought it was an interesting movie and entertaining in a sense because of him turning into a black man. But thinking about it as an adult, it's just like the same regurgitated blackface type characterizations with a few things that I would say that James Earl Jones part in this movie was pretty much interesting because of just him calling him out, even though <laughs> it wasn't that evident or something like that. And just him getting a rea the, the C. Thomas Howell character getting the reality check that black people do have to work for whatever they go through, you know. But the thing about this movie that that thinking about it right now and even I, I watched the previews of it. The fact that it, it what was it was a lame line at the at the end of the preview, something like. Um, about getting down, you know, like just typical like black lingo kind of like it was stupid. And if you guys want, you could look up the previews. You know, I'm trying to remember the, 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 the slogan of it. It was like, oh, you know, if he, if he... <laughs> anyway, I'm going to just go on. But this pretty much was like a form of blackface, too, you know, like just kind of chucked in to entertainment, you know, and it, and it reminded me also of the Chokal incident, which happened, of course, 20 something years later, but more of a real version of this, you know. And although the J did not like dye his skin, he still played off of that. He used blackness for a convenience and it eventually backfired on him too. This fool actually dropped out of, of the college he got into. But, you know, I, I saw some interview where he talks about, you know, him being a Hindu and how basically the reason he dropped out is because of karma and it's just like dude people are going to remember you for this no matter what if you believe in that concept of karma there's i mean <laughs> i'm not i'm not the most high but i'll tell you this people are not going to forget this you know from what i understand his sister who's a famous actress also disowned him because of what he did but the c thomas howell movie if you guys ever see that 
Um, it's an interesting story. There was a lot of dumb stereotype BS in there. Um, but this, the reason I'm talking about this is because it goes over a whole issue of not only blackface, but also using black lightness, <clears throat> black likeness for not only a convenience, but also just, just to, to even demonize black people, which is what I think to Chuck, Chuck Tao did, you know, and this movie to some degree, to a large degree goes over that same stereotype, which pretty much is like a demonization to me. The movie Tropic Thunder, I didn't see it. I thought it was interesting that Robert Downey Jr. did this. But then thinking about this again, it's like, OK, I don't care how intelligent they make this dude seem. He, he still looks like a buffoon in the movie. You know, I, I saw a little bit of it. He still looks like a buffoon in the movie. I saw a little bit of it. And it's like, how come they just couldn't get a regular black actor to play, you know, a black man? Why did they have to do this? Yeah, I don't I, I, I don't care how much a person makes. You know, even if they're doing a black face character, if they make him look somewhat serious and in a serious situation, you know, the director was talking about basically trying to make an excuse for doing blackface, saying it was intelligent the way that they made the storyline. Who gives a care? It's the same thing. Why not use a regular black person? Why use a white man playing a black man? And of course, you guys know about the black mask. You know, people using these black masks to demonize black people again. The whole crime thing and all that. They know that looking for a black man would would be of, of interest. And from what I understand, this guy had, I don't know who he is. I need to find out who he is. If you guys know, tell me. Did that with this mask. And, and I, I, I seriously believe that he's not the only one. I believe that there's been a lot of a lot of things like this happening, even in our urban communities, to be honest. Now, we get into <laughs> the same thing when, when it comes to using black blackness for convenience. This Rachel Dolezal, you guys all know who she is. She did the same thing, from what I understand, for the college situation. But she somehow, you know, wasn't as exposed even when she... Uh, did it and she ends up joining the NAACP and and basically she's the first one to be coined as transracial you know totally lied about her roots and everything like that you know and again it's like okay you're playing off of a stereotype in a lot of ways and I'll be honest with you guys you know, I've known black, I've known white people to grow up in black neighborhoods, but I've never seen them do anything like this. They'll tell you they're white. They don't have this excuse, you know, that, that they're not. You know, Rachel Dolezal basically tried to look like she was some biracial black person. And of course, you guys all know the history on that. I haven't seen her documentary or whatever, but, you know, she used black, blackness as a convenience you know, to 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 do the same thing that Chokal did with the whole school thing too. And and just she the difference between her and him, she kind of just basically embraced her lie to the point where she became that. And 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 to be honest, it's really delusional when you think of people that do this. And it does not serve a purpose, you know, I mean, it, it doesn't serve a purpose at all. You know, I don't know what she did in the NAACP. Um, but it's almost like she's it's like a double agent to some degree, you know. 
Um, this is not a slight against white people that have grown up in black neighborhoods and it's all that they know. Um, like I said, I've known people like that, but this right here is a lie and it's ridiculous. But this whole transracial thing, you know, it's like she's backed herself into a corner with her lie. So she basically says that she's transracial and all that crap. This actually <laughs> is another example of, of, of that. Um, what's her name? Martina Big. She was just obsessed with having a black look to the point where this is her, you know, now. This is how she looks now. She's still a white woman to me. I don't buy that. You could look as African as you try to look, but you're not, you're not black, you know, but it's almost like, well, what is this for? Is it just for aesthetic? I mean, like, what on earth is this for? You know, like, and, and do you think it's just some exoticism or you're looking like kind of, kind of, thinking that it's some kind of like exo like exoticism kind of is a bad word to me unless it's it, unless it has to something to do with music because it reminds me of just like a bird or, or or like trees or something something that is not human so you know with her i think that she did that looking exotic like you you're looking like you're you know Basically playing on a stereotype. You know, it's just, I don't get it. I don't get it at all. But even with that, you have this epidemic. You know, these Instagram models that are like transracial. I already did a video on this. Or, or they're not trying to be transracial. Some of them will say that. But it's what they've been doing, trying to look like a lot of these uh black and biracial black Instagram models that have been getting a lot of attention. You know, there's quite a bit of models on there and, and, and some of them I actually dig um, that are that are models. Like like Uchimba is like my favorite model, I have to say. that Jada Regnant, just, she's a Jamaican model. Both are very dark-skinned models. And, and I have a few friends, like my friend uh, Jewel, that models as well. She's a black biracial model. But these models are getting attention. So I guess a lot of these um, white girls are kind of trying to co-op that look. It, like I told you guys the story on my other video of how I found out about this. I didn't, it, it kind of tripped me out to be honest. You know, it really tripped me out. I, I was like, wow, really? <laughs> you know? It's kind of scary, though, because you don't know, like, who's who and what's what. And it reminds me of, like, again, that whole movie Soul Man. You know, like, like what is your point? You know, are you... You're, you're basically being black by convenience because you want something out of it. You want the, the, the perks of being black, you know, or what you think are the perks of being black, that attention... But the thing is, do you really want the reality of being black? You can go all the way back to your normal skin tone all you want. But like you want to be this cute model, but you're deceiving people. And most likely they'll get some kind of reward or monetary gift for it. You know, it's very deceptive. Very, and, and all that attention. Usually that generates some kind of money and all that too. Really, that is not cool. In ending this, I'm going to go back to um, the guy that did this uh, experiment in being black. And, and Tim Wise, who, yeah, I'm kind of, you know, I, I, I like some of the things that he has to say, but then I'm kind of suspect on certain things that, you know, he's about as well, even though he says things that I agree with. But that's another story. This guy is John Griffith. John Griffith, he did the um, the book Black Like Me and the movie Black Like Me. I, I don't know if he directed it, but it was based off of him. I haven't seen that movie, but I, I just had that little clip from um, the Tim Wise thing. 
one of the things that was interesting is what he said basically is like he he doesn't know what it's like to be black because by convenience he became black just to figure out what it was like to be black in that regard you know of of experiencing racial prejudice and all that but the thing is the reality of the situations is and he said it himself is that he would never know what it was like to be black because he's not and and although it was an experiment what he saw was just or, or experience was just a glimpse of that and even that was not something that defined being black as a whole it's a whole life of being black and and it was an interesting thing of what uh Tim Wise asked those uh ladies about being white it's amazing how one could look up on being black from that standpoint because from what i gather it's a standpoint where there is no struggle in trying to assimilate in that regard or to fit in because the so-called dominant society pretty much um set the framework for that and she said it herself you know like they don't have to deal with a lot of the same things that we do and and, and all that i i'm curious what you guys think of john griffith's um experiment I'm curious of what you guys think of John Griffith's experiment because some people would definitely say it's blackface in a lot of regards. I myself don't think that he did it to mock. I really think that he came from um a good place. But some people might think it's suspect. They might think it's trolling. I don't know. To be honest, I don't know. Um it's interesting to look look on this. And as a kid, you know, I I'd read about him doing this and all that. But it's just wonder I mean like I wonder just what what how is it teaching people now, you know? I'm not saying that it's not but just the legacy and like what was the work after this what was john's work after this experiment did he work you know to overthrow the supremacist the, the white supremacist element of this not just challenging certain things but actually trying to infiltrate and in overthrowing that i'm just curious you know anyway you guys i hope what i did was clear and i hope you guys could understand um what i'm asking it's an interesting conversation it's it's uh just something to think about this is not just on um, blackface it's just people trying to co-opt the black experience and although there's a difference between uh Cholkem and John Griffith in their in their ways that they did this i just you know wonder what society black and white is learning from this especially black society because i'm a part of black society anyway peace to you guys